All right, welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We got a super fun episode today. I'll give you the title and I'll let you think about it, but it's why you don't have to be a Kardashian to secure media coverage. Well, I know I'm not a Kardashian, so that's, uh, well, first of all, thank God, but <laughs> you're probably not either if you're listening to this. So I'm really excited to dive in. And right off the bat, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to talk about ubiquity, which in the harmonious architecture is what we have renamed sales and marketing. So this is getting out into the public, getting in front of your in front of your ideal avatar. I'm excited for this conversation. And let me please welcome in Andrea. Andrea, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this is uh, I love a catchy title. And uh, obviously, well, if anyone's going to put a catchy title on there, it's you, right? Because we're going to talk about this super fun topic and dive in. But give me a little bit of your background. I know we're going to talk about PR a little bit, but how did you get into this space? You know, it's so funny how what you do when you're younger shapes you for when you're older. And I was always the publicity chair of every committee in high school. And that continued in college. And I actually was going to be a broadcast major and was a broadcast major, but I took a bunch of PR classes. And still, I was the public relations chair of almost every committee I was on. And so I realized when I got out of college, that this was my calling, that I really love public relations and securing interviews for my clients and, and preparing them for those interviews, having relationships with the press. And so there I was at the CBS radio division in New York City, working in the media relations department uh, and, and started to really fine tune my craft and then went to the agency side of things and a number of years ago came the opportunity to do my own thing and start Andrea Pass Public Relations. And I, I've never been happier being an entrepreneur and running my own PR consultancy. So that's kind of the traje- trajectory of my world. Yeah, that's super cool. And it's funny that you say that because we usually hear both sides of that, that sentence where I've never been happier being an entrepreneur and ah, I have no time. I'm an entrepreneur. So Tell me, give me a little bit of this, the sense of your, uh, your, your work day. Are you, I mean, PR that's and press you're that's 24 seven business. Like, are you maxed out and always working or do you kind of navigate that a little bit better? You know, I think that it depends where you are in your life. And I think that the fact that I had been the vice president of media relations for a number of public relations firms working 24 seven. Uh, No matter where I was, I was working. I was at a conference for one client working on another. And I think that when I realized that it was time to break out and do my own thing, I was able to create this life work balance. And I put life before work because I know I can get the job done and I can get the job done in the hours that we've talked about with my clients. My clients are not hiring me as their public relations professional for 40 hours a week. They're hiring me for 20 hours a month. And so I'm breaking it up. And therefore I can have that balance of things in life, whether it's meeting a colleague for breakfast or attending an online webinar that interests me. So there are days that I'm working till late in the evening. And then there are other days that I'm going to an in-person networking event. And so I think you find that balance when you get to a certain stage of your life and your career to be able to do that. And yes, PR is 24 seven, but that doesn't mean that the press person is reading their emails 24 seven and responding 24 seven. Right now, I just saw pop up while we were talking, a reporter I've been back and forth with now for three months. She finally is ready to do the interview with the client. (laughs) Okay, so it doesn't mean it's going to be the minute that you've pitched that story, but I stay in touch, ask how I can make the process easier, And she told me, can I make this an email interview instead of a phone interview? I said, no problem. We'll answer your questions. And she's going to take my client's answers, fit it right into an article in a magazine and less work for my client, less work for her. We get the job done and my clients featured all success. Yeah, that's that's amazing. So, hey, if you want to work with Andrea, look at that. She just had success while we're recording this interview. So she gets it done for her clients. But let's I want to back up a little bit, because when I hear PR, public relations, first of all, my first thought is uh, complicated. And my second thought is expensive. So can you kind of break that down? First of all, in your words, what is PR? What is public relations? And then what can I expect when I want to 
go down this path and promote my company, promote my service or, or my book? What does that look like? So there are many different types of public relations. So I'm going to talk about mine, which is getting your message out to new audiences using the press. Earned media coverage, meaning you are certainly paying me for my services, but we are not paying that media outlet to feature you. So this is editorial, not advertorial. The difference, in advertorial, you pay, just like in advertising. In advertising, people are skeptical when they're reading that message. In press, they're going into it thinking, this is a fact. I'm getting educational information, and I'm not being sold. So there's a difference. Advertising sells, public relations educates. So my lane is press coverage. So all day long, I am out there researching press opportunities, securing interviews, pitching stories, and making sure when anyone Googles my client, you're seeing my client featured in the press. And that's where I differentiate myself. And so my world of public relations is press, press, press. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. It's interesting that you hit on that too, because uh, it, it sparked in my head. When you're on social media and you're you're scrolling through things, when you see the word sponsored, at least for me, that's an immediate scroll past. Like, I don't want it. I don't want to be sold to. I don't want it. Me too. To me too. But yeah, like you're saying, I mean, you you tend to, well, I want to touch on that too, but at least trust the source a little bit more when it's it looks like an organic thing. But how do you balance that? Because these days, fake news media, right? Like it's all over. How can you trust the media and the press? Do you ever come up against that with your clients? You know, I, I'm very big on authenticity and honesty. And if we have a story to tell, then we tell that story. And the journalist or homegrown journalist, because mm -hmm. today, not everyone is someone who went to school for journalism. There's a lot of people that are doing things because they're in business or because they have an interest. They might have a podcast and they don't necessarily have a degree in broadcasting. That's okay. But we're giving information as best as we know it, meaning the client, to be able to educate other people. So listen, we live in a world of skepticism, so we can't change everybody. But as far as I'm concerned, legitimate media outlets, legitimate podcasts are not fake news. You know, they're, they're real news. And I don't think you have to break it down and say, oh, my goodness, that author of that book, you know, said this number, but the number was really that number. Does it matter? It, it, you know, like, let's just talk about learning something new every single day. And with press coverage, when you're learning and educating others, there's that potential client. Wow. I need that service. I didn't really know that I needed to do X, Y, and Z. And so PR is going to educate without selling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Now, in tying to the, the ubiquity discipline within the harmonious architecture, because that's really what we're, we're focused a lot on here. One of the things we say, and the, the reason it's called ubiquity, it's, it's because it's being all places your ideal avatar is and showing up in the way that they need to hear you and see you. So when I think of that versus just saying, okay, I want PR, I want to be on NBC, I want to be on the Today Show, you know, that may be not that may not be your ideal avatar. That that may contradict your ubiquity. So do you work through that process with your clients and first identify where they need to be? Here's an interesting story. Um, I was representing a consumer organizing product that was in your kitchen. Within the same week, I had the product featured on Huffington Post, 1.5 million unique views a month, and a mom blog, maybe 900 unique views a month. Huffington Post, zero click-throughs. Mm -hmm. Mom blog, 50 purchases. Ooh. Right. Okay, so understand where your buyer is. On the flip side, I was working with a New York City med spa. Okay, they offer facials, this and that. They didn't have any differentiators. I tried to get it out of them. But <laughs> no, no, we do pretty much what everyone else does. Well, okay, so I had a uh, blog out of New York City interested in featuring them. That's not our audience, they said to me. They write articles about people walking their dogs. Well, wealthy Upper East Side or West Side people walking their dogs would go to a medispa. 
they didn't understand who their client was. They didn't have socialites. They didn't have wealthy heirs as their client. They had people on the Upper East or West Side of New York City, and they weren't reaching them where they're at. And, and so that's what I say to my clients. Let's reach people where they're at. Not everyone is meant to be in the Wall Street Journal. I had a client featured in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, it was a, a light for seasonal affective disorder. And this about a week or two before, they were featured on a, a segment on a TV station in, uh, I think it was Minneapolis. They got so many sales from Minneapolis, which of course gets dark very early in the wintertime. And there were no click throughs through the Wall Street Journal. So, you know, keep in mind that your audience wears so many different hats and you can reach them when they're wearing those different hats, whether it's because you're a parent, you're a caregiver, you like to bicycle, maybe you play Taekwondo uh, or you, you travel. Remember that we all wear so many hats. We're not just in this narrow business lane and that's it. Yeah, that's that's so so crucial to understand, and I, I can always tell when someone is actually a, really good at what they do because they they touch multiple disciplines. And and what you've been hinting at here, and you've been saying click through rates, monitoring the metrics, I, that is so important in marketing in PR. But I I see so many people on the internet who just say push out creatives and and just see what works. How can you do that if you're not monitoring? the click-through rates and the conversions, and you're not understanding where your buyers are. So I love that you really go deep with your clients and it's not just about getting them there, but it's about optimizing it from what I'm hearing. And certainly when you're talking about optimizing, the most important thing that I tell all of my contacts and all of my clients who work with Andrea Past Public Relations is share. If the article appears today, okay, share it on your social this week. And then guess what? Post it as an original post again in five weeks, three months, six months, eight months. Make it appear as new content. The average reader or listener or viewer is not going to say, oh, but the original date of that podcast was. No, they're going to say, oh, this is interesting information that I didn't know before. So if you don't have an event that's tagged to a date, then don't worry about saying the date. Don't discuss what the weather is outside when you're doing an interview. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it's winter, spring, summer, or fall, because your business, your product, and your service is available for purchase year round. So keep things evergreen. Reuse the press coverage. For example, I was featured in an article about two years ago, and I decided what the heck I was going to repost it on my LinkedIn a few months ago. The amount of comments and engagement I got from an article that was old, but it didn't matter. It was press, it was not written by me, and therefore it increases your level. You know, uh, you know, perception is reality, and therefore audiences are perceiving you as knowledgeable and important. You are, but more knowledgeable and important when you're featured in the press. But use it over and over again, and if you don't, you are wasting your money on a PR person. Because that social is what helps to increase that awareness and engagement. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You your own medicine and it works and you're like, oh, duh. I tell people to do this all the time. <laughs> and and it's, it, it cracks me up because I had a, a, a longtime contact of mine who became a client and had written a book. And he had someone doing his social and they didn't post any of the press. And I got so much press about this book. And, you know, the book sold and there were click throughs, but there would have been even more if they had shared and tabbed the media outlet. Because you just never know how someone actually receives that information. And so I, I don't focus on analytics because to me, everything is one. One plus one plus one. And, and for people who are so focused on, oh, but that has a smaller listenership, readership, viewership. It doesn't matter because if those are the people who are your potential buyers, clients, you need one and you need one more. And, and so take that approach. Everything doesn't have to be 
this Kardashian approach that it's millions and millions and millions. And, and the Kardashians charge a lot of money for one Instagram post. You can pay millions. And guess what? Doesn't stay up on their page. They're taking it down because they want you to pay it again. So, you know, think about where you're spending your money, but understand that to grow your business and to grow your presence in the world of media, you need to spend some money to have the right public relations professional who is going to devote the time to secure those interviews and make sure that when the interviews appear, all of the notes include that click through to your website or your social media or your Amazon page or your other buying pages. Yeah, that's that's such great advice. Now, I do want to uh, just put this out there. If, if this resonates with you and you want to dive into PR, you want to work with Andrea, I hope you do. Andrea, where can we find you and, and take that next step to work with you? Well, you can reach me via my uh, website, andreapasspr.com. Make an appointment on the appointments tab and make sure you note that we met via this, this broadcast. Or you can connect with me on LinkedIn, Andrea Pass. So I'm lots of other places, but I think those are the two main ones in business to uh, be able to get the word out. And, and I always welcome a conversation, but I also recognize that to have the conversation, you have to know that you have to have a budget and a budget for public relations is not $500 for one time. It's not. And I think that people have to understand that you pay for someone's hours and their service. So there is a budget, but the budget isn't $10,000 a month. It's more affordable than that. But you have to have a budget to get PR, get it done right, and continue doing it so that your name is relevant every single day. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's really great. Great. I I find Andrea's website. So please go check that out. Take that first step if you want to get more publicity, more PR, get your name out there in your company. And she works with solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, and companies. So if you have a message to get out the world, please go visit. This was amazing. And I want to highlight one other thing that I, I thought was really important. Um, and it's because I've seen the results of both ends. You said getting in front of the right audience, doesn't matter the size, is really what counts. And I had a, uh, a mentor who, this was maybe a year or so ago, and his standard for media, if you will, was like Joe Rogan podcast. So we're, we're, you're talking like the biggest shows in the world. He wouldn't even listen if it was anything less than that. It, it was all or nothing. And then I had someone else tell me and educate me on the simple little fact that a podcast actually provides some of the best SEO that you can get. And that's uh, for some reason, all the podcast platforms, including YouTube. So when I link to this website, that is, that's one backlink to your website. So what did I do? I said, okay, me and my business partner, Sean, we're going to get on every single podcast we can possibly get on. And within the span of one month, we did somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 45 podcasts between the two of us. And that's 45 backlinks pointing to our website, getting the SEO ranked we're doing absolutely nothing. We didn't pay for SEO. We didn't pay for marketing. Well, I'm going to interrupt you there because you didn't Please. do absolutely nothing. You educated yeah. audiences being a podcast guest. Fair. You worked yes. to secure those interviews and kudos to you for doing that on your own without a PR person, but not the, the average business cannot do that. Mm -hmm. And they need someone else because there's just not enough hours in the day. But it's it's doing a lot because if you're not giving the right interview, if you're not hitting the right notes, then it's not going to resonate with the listener. And I work with my clients to media train them because a client who comes on and says, well, in my book, in chapter five in my book, well, no one can care less about chapter five. And what is the name of your book again? Because people are listening to podcasts on the go. They might have it in the background while they're working at their computer, but they might be out jogging or cooking dinner. And things are on in the background. So you have to remember to say, I'm with Andrea Pass Public Relations. My mm -hmm. book is XYZ. My product is this name. My company is this name. And there is a way to do a mm -hmm. podcast interview or any interview correctly. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's key. Also, don't mm -hmm. go off on tangents. I've had clients that decide to go off on a tangent. I listen later and I said, you never talked about what we were supposed to talk about for the interview. And at that point, I have no control. 
make sure you're hitting your message points. And if you have to bring the interviewer back, do that. But don't chit chat about a party you went to last Saturday night. Unless it's relevant to what you're doing if you're a party planner, uh, it's not necessary to talk about that as part of your interview. Talk about your business, your service, your product, your book, your nonprofit, but say the name of it. And so you obviously know how to do this, but the average a business person is overwhelmed with so many other aspects of business. So that's an important part of public relations. And that's what I do with Andrea Pass Public Relations. That's so awesome. Hey, look at that. You dropped the name of your company again for one one last little drop in there. Woo! I love it. No, this was an awesome, awesome interview. Thank you. It's so good to have a professional and talk to somebody who can help you get to that next level too. So again, andreapasspr.com. Go work with Andrea if you want to get your name out there. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm laughing cause I've had guests that's gone off on tangents and all, all of that. And, and then more. So, um, please work with a professional. This is not, it's not as easy as you think it is sitting down in front of a camera can be challenging for a lot of people. You need a coach who can help you through it. Um, so Andrea, thank you again for being here. This has been an awesome episode of harmonious at lunch. We'll see you on the next one, but for now go out there and get your business to the next level and get it in public. See you next time.